Hello and welcome. You are back with me, Iler Uringhuru, here at Kabaza Web TV in the program Two Hours. Today we are going to talk about the cause of impunity in Burundi. And for that, we have our guest, Dr. Leon de Murguimo, lecturer at Nelson Mandela University. Dr. Lea, good morning. Good morning, Hilaire. Uh, how are you? I'm good. I'm very good. How about you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. I'm good. Great. How, how is the weather uh, there in South Africa? The weather here in South Africa is uh, a bit cold uh, mm -hmm. because uh, it's winter now, winter is starting, uh, but we are coping. Oh, great, great. Here in Seattle, we had um, a sunny morning, but this afternoon was raining so much. And I, many people here in the United States know um, Seattle for uh, its rain. <laughs> so uh, let's go to uh, our subject, uh, the cause or causes of impunity in Burundi. Uh, how, how do you define impunity? Yes, he left. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, impunity has got different meanings, mm -hmm. but uh, um, how I understand it is impunity means exemption from punishment. Mm -hmm. In terms of international human rights, it refers to the failure to bring perpetrators of human rights violations to justice, mm -hmm. and as such, it, uh, it constitutes a denial of victims' right to justice and redress. Great. And impunity in Burundi can be traced uh, back um, during the independence of the country, but it may even be uh, traced before that. What do you think is the cause or uh, causes of, of the impunity in Burundi? Uh, again, um, mm -hmm. I may say that uh, for the case of Burundi, for a long time, there has been no respect for rule of law mm -hmm. and human rights. There are many incidents of uh, examples of gross violation of human rights mm -hmm. since 1960s, uh, even before mm -hmm. today. Uh, a lot of human, uh, uh, gro uh, international crimes amounting to genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity have been committed in Burundi, which have been never uh, properly investigated. Mm -hmm. uh, even the Burundi Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which is uh, well known as TVR, uh, uh, which was established in 2014 mm -hmm. to investigate and come up with the truth about the past gross violation of human rights, which should have been uh, brought about national healing, reconciliation, and the reconstruction in Burundi is effective. Mm. Uh, before independence, I can uh, bring you, uh, I can give you some few examples of um, uh, incidents of which, uh, which can justify what I'm just saying. Okay. Before independence, mm. mothers of prominent uh, nationalist leaders like Prince Louis Ouagafele was assassinated shortly before the Burundian independence. Mm -hmm. In 1961, uh, there was execution of um, trade union leaders uh, like Jan Duadike in Kamenge and other, and other uh, civilians. Mm -hmm. In 1963, uh, there was assassination of Pierre Gendandumwe, um, mm -hmm. a Hutu Prime Minister. Uh, also, there were uh, politically motivated murders uh, of many, many um, uh, prominent leaders in 1965, uh, starting with uh, people uh, or leaders like Paul Milerekano. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, uh, Jervé Nyangoma and uh, Paul Midian Hiza, Pierre Burarame, uh, Leonard uh, Nanchahoruli, 
And uh, we other many, many Hutu civilians who were killed in Rwanda. Mm-hmm. In 1972, uh, that way uh, things went well, mm-hmm. uh, especially after the assassination of Prince Ntare V of Burundi, mm-hmm. or by the name of Charles Lise, Lise. who was assassinated in that year. Mm-hmm. And also a cabinet minister, uh, Marte Ndaya mm-hmm. uh, along with many, many uh, civilians, uh, whom some scholars uh, claim to be 300,000 uh, civilians, uh, mm-hmm. mostly from the Hutu tribe. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, there, uh, there were other evidence of mass murders uh, in Burundi mm-hmm. uh, in 1988. Uh, in what is referred to Mhega and Marangara Masako, where many civilians were killed. Mm-hmm. Also, in 1991, uh, there was uh, a murder of a civilian, a civilian in Chibitoke. Mm-hmm. What escalated the matter was uh, the assassination of the first democratically elected Hutu president mm-hmm. by the name of Melchior Ngadaye in 1993 uh, who was brutally assassinated and killed along with thousands of civilians mm. who, were in, uh, who were assassinated in, uh, who were killed after his death and of late uh, on uh, 13th of May 2015 mm-hmm. there was also a coup which was led by the major a uh, military official mm-hmm. by the name of uh, General Neombari. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, who uh, who um, organized a coup which uh, led up to uh, also a killing of civilians. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, what I can say is that using this example, a few examples I have cited. Mm-hmm. Most of the perpetrators mm-hmm. have not yet faced justice, and this justifies the uh, continuation of impunity in Burundi. Going to the second question about what you call causes of mm-hmm. impunity in Burundi, mm-hmm. I may not hundred uh, percent say that they are causes. R- rather, mm-hmm. I would call them contributory factors. Mm-hmm. So there are some contributory factors which I consider mm-hmm. that they have nurtured a culture of impunity in Burundi. Mm-hmm. Uh, one uh, is the dysfunctional justice system, whereby you find a situation mm-hmm. of incompetent uh, prosecutorial agencies which uh, are unable to conduct proper criminal investigation mm-hmm. and perhaps maybe because of lack of um, resources in terms of personnel and financial resources. Mm-hmm. Also you find uh, the issue of incompetence of judicial of officers mm-hmm. who are uh, like your uh, magistrates and the judges who do not know what to do mm-hmm. and all, uh, there is also um, an issue of relying uh, of a tendency of uh, relying on the outdated laws mm-hmm. and uh, with also executive interference. The issue of uh, inter- executive in- interference, maybe I can explain it later, mm-hmm. but let me, let me move to the second uh, factor. Mm-hmm. The second factor uh, uh, I call the double standard nature and selective morality of international community, whereby you find superpowers uh, he, uh, select mm-hmm. what cases to deal with and which others they don't want to deal with. Mm-hmm. I can cite a, a simple example of uh, how the case of Burundi was dealt with. Mm-hmm. by the international community in comparison with Rwanda. Okay. Uh, in Rwanda, the international community uh, did intervene 
and we uh, the, the, there is uh, evidence of uh, uh, perpetrators of gross violation of human rights in Rwanda mm -hmm. who were uh, who were uh, perpetrated. Uh, sadly, mm -hmm. there is what I call the lack of political will to confront impunity mm -hmm. for crimes committed, especially uh, under the previous uh, military regime in Burundi, mm. which um, has also uh, contributed towards uh, the continuation of a cycle of ambivalence and ongoing violation of human rights. Mm -hmm. leading up to uh, impunity as well because no one who has been uh, prosecuted. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, firstly, uh, there is a lack of... Uh, 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 there, there is an issue of corruption at all levels. Mm -hmm. On this aspect, I cannot say that uh, it's only... Co the issue of corruption is in the mm -hmm. Corruption is, find, uh, is found elsewhere. But uh, for the case of Burundi, it adds up to the uh, continuation of a culture of impunity. Mm. So, uh, like uh, the challenges faced by uh, judiciary, for instance, the CBR or the uh, Burundi's Truth and uh, Reconciliation Commission, Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, cannot be, ye yes, cannot uh, do much. Uh, mm. or, or cannot be effective. Mm. But sometimes uh, people you think, why is it happening like that? Mm. Yeah, great. You, you talked uh, about contributory factors. Um, and and, and uh, don't you think that contributory factors exist when there is a, a cause? If there is no contributory factors, and there is a cause, then uh, impunity will be there. But when there are contributory factors and without a cause, th 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 there would not be impunity. Don't you think there should be a, um, a cause or, a, or causes that will lead to, to impunity in Burundi? Yeah, uh, yeah, the cause, <laughs> I don't know uh, 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 what uh, um, uh, uh, people can interpret mm -hmm. the cause and uh, contribute. Yes, um, to some extent, uh, this concept can overlap, mm -hmm. but um, some may be seen as cause and others contributory factors, but uh, they all overlap. Uh, but mostly, if there is a contributory factor, Mm -hmm. then it has uh, to aggravate the problem. Okay, uh, great. Uh, so, uh, some scholars address impunity in Burundi, who address impunity in Burundi, they usually evoke uh, the lack of independence of the, ju the judiciary uh, as one of the, uh, the causes. Do you agree with, uh, with them? Yeah, to some extent, I do agree. Uh, I, I do agree uh, that is uh, one or, or could be the uh, causes of, of impunity. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So uh, let us first listen to uh, this um, uh, video, or watch this video, and listen to the content of um, what the Minister of Justice of Burundi um, spoke uh, on March 25th in. In, in a meeting with uh, judges and uh, prosecutors, and then we will ask you a question on on, on this uh, statement. Mere lo kuma tibino do residence. Na mandi kona subi ramo imisio se po tribuna do residence. No motima wigi hook. Ingo la nezo se tugiranga mu gihu kuzihera kuzihera mu kiva. Bizera munzu zikahera mu babanyi zikabandanya muri kominote Ariko turafisi kibazo matibino de residence uravye ngene rapport d'enquête mvuga Tribino de residence ni habene gihugu bari kubaragwa ni bari kubarakira Tribino de residence niho habakaje gari kambere kabaho kandi ari wo mutima wineza y'umwene gihugu muto muto Na ngo 
imanza tujanye na expedition ngo twarabuje ngo gucura ubanza none no statu tuvwa de ruku twabigize kuberike kuko mwabishyiramo amakosa benshi gende se ntayenda decide yuko urasohoka none no statu tuvwa de ruku kuko umvikanye na nyene inzu ari mu mafuti kumwirukana hataragera cyane bidakwiye nitsindi nitsindi zingingo zijanye nivyo zipfa gufatwa umuntu ataravye neza zikatuma uko rubanza wakiye rutagiriki credibility cyagiturire kutarabane zibintu gasanga biteye ikora umwe yagihugu yakire urubanza muri tipina de residence yo mukinama umuntu cyemera ko mukinama bamurenganye acha tari uko kwa preza ku supreme c'est la democratie tinya kuwa wa preza ku supreme nyakira yende umurundi ndumwene gihugu nje wa mwene gihugu nyakira akamwakira acha bimenya yuko warukiye nabe yasanga preza ku supreme si hari ti nyakuba kwa minise nakoma nina kubwira ibyo bankoreye cyanda mwakira je nibera mu biro kandi nzemera icyo nyene ndakiwe ngo mugabo nkize umwene gihugu aka karenganyo agiriko ngaca ngenda nkaraba nti ibarajya kuye itega ko cyarifa kwa minisi rekaje kwa peza kuda petira bicukora kazuba peza kuda pera guhamagati hindura ibi bintu nibishoboka minisi avuze ko bidashoboka ugacume ngo minisi yaje kubasubirira mu gukima ncanga ari kwa bategeka ubutunga nti bukigenga barabonye aho ubutungane bwo kugenga mu mafuti ha nibikunda Uza wa yakoze neza akagira uhaguruka ati byagenze nabi hagarika murace mu bivuga ati byari byagenze neza ariko ahantu hose amaze kumfata ibingo yo guhagarika biba byagenze nabi urukomba bati Great so uh, we are back now um, the minister of justice uh, in, in in a meeting with uh, judges and uh, prosecutors in in the city of Bujumbura uh, she acknowledges that uh, sometimes she orders the chief justice of uh, court of appeal to tell judges of the lower court to change uh, the decisions that uh, the lower court made because a citizen went to her and explained to her the problem and she found that there was some kind of injustice against um, uh, this citizen. Uh, don't you think uh, this is a blatant example of the interference of the executive uh, in the court's uh, proceedings? Yeah, thank you, Hiller, uh, for, uh, for uh, your clarity about what the Honorable Minister is addressing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I may say uh, yes or no. Uh, yes, in, uh, uh, based on the principle of checks and balance, mm -hmm. um, as we, we know in law, mm -hmm. uh, whereby uh, the uh, the uh, three organs of the state, which are judiciary, mm -hmm. legislature, and executive, they cannot work in silos or they cannot work in isolation. Mm -hmm. There had to be a, a kind of monitoring whereby one organ of the state can act as a watchdog to another. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, coming back now to what the minister is saying, mm -hmm. she refers to the situation uh, whereby the criminals get away, uh, get away without facing justice mm -hmm. by means of corruption or influence from the well-connected individuals. The minister, a minister goes on and mm -hmm. mentions that the victim of the crime can appeal to the higher authority mm -hmm. if they lack uh, confidence in the justice, meaning that they can go straight to her uh, because uh, they lack the confidence in the current justice system. Mm -hmm. And uh, for that reason, the minister uh, tries to advise and order Mm -hmm. the review of the judicial proceedings mm -hmm. and also mentions that she can take uh, disciplinary action against the implicated uh, judges or magistrates. Mm -hmm. Therefore, in my view, uh, mm -hmm. what the minister is doing uh, may not 
could say be interpreted as an executive interference mm-hmm. in the court proceedings. Mm-hmm. But rather, it can be uh, taken as a mere admini- a performing administrative duty, mm-hmm. something which can be commended and also uh, 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 whereby uh, uh, the minister herself is admitting that there are problems in the, in the current justice system in Burundi. However, mm-hmm. if, uh, for instance, there is an element of uh, a, an executive official mm-hmm. acting with mm-hmm. or acting beyond his or her powers, mm-hmm. it can turn out to be uh, interpreted as an executive inter- interference in judicial. Good. Thank you very much. And um, you mentioned earlier um, several examples of what uh, happened in the past, um, uh, mostly about killings, um, assassinations. Uh, what do you think uh, would be the remedy um, to, er- to er- eradicate impunity in Burundi? Yeah, well, uh, eradication of impunity in Burundi, uh, to my view, Mm-hmm. must go hand in hand with the truth telling or openness about the painful past through national dialogue. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's when, uh, for instance, issues of uh, forgiveness, healing, mm-hmm. reconciliation, reparation, and the reconciliation uh, and the reconstruction can be uh, uh, can be discussed. Mm-hmm. In fact, uh, this reminds me of uh, what happened on uh, this year, on 11th of June, uh, which was a memorial for the Hutu students who were uh, assassinated or murdered at the University of Bujumbura, mm-hmm. uh, who are uh, in 1995. Mm-hmm. This is another sad uh, reminder of our uh, of the past in Burundi, mm-hmm. uh, together with other few events which I have mentioned at the beginning. Mm. So the remedy uh, uh, for Burundian uh, is uh, Burundian is to know the truth. Mm-hmm. People with evidence, for example, must come forward, and um, the suspect uh, must also tell the Burundians and the uh, entire international community of what happened in Burundi. Mm-hmm. Uh, people, for instance, there are, there are there is evidence of people. Who, uh, who looted and confiscated other, uh, other people's uh, property. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, then uh, when the, the, uh, the owner of those property wants um, their property to be returned, there are some conditions attached to that. Mm-hmm. And uh, to that extent, this is, uh, this is not um, in line with uh, what, for instance, the, the principles of uh, trans, uh, transitional justice processes uh, is all about. Uh, mm-hmm. So, uh, for example, generally, transitional justice processes uh, must be always uh, aimed to deal with the ongoing violations of human rights by investigating the past crimes and identifying those who are responsible uh, mm-hmm. for gross violation of human rights and imposing uh, sanctions uh, for uh, especially for those who bear most of the responsibility for uh, gross violations of human rights. Mm-hmm. Hence, uh, uh, the, the, uh, those processes also uh, deal with the providing or uh, giving the victims uh, reparation mm-hmm. and try to prevent the future human rights violations and promote a sustainable peace, uh, national reconciliation, and the reconstru- uh, reconstruction. Mm. However, uh, the transitional justice in Burundi remains unfruitful. Unlike other cases, mm. um, uh, if I can take you back, way back to the Nuremberg trial, mm. and or other cases like Chile or uh, what happened in South Africa, Rwanda, Sierra Leone, Cambodia, just to mention a, a few. 
Mm -hmm. uh, where diverse approaches of uh, judicial and non-judicial uh, uh, sanctions uh, were applied, mm -hmm. but Burundi seems to be unprovoking. Thank you very and much. And also, mm -hmm. uh, in addition to that, mm -hmm. in addition to that, I think, as I, I mentioned earlier, uh, that um, then. Uh, Burundi's uh, Truth and the Reconciliation Commission, uh, which was uh, uh, was established, mm -hmm. uh, it cannot uh, function properly because there are some obstacles. For instance, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the documentary evidence might have uh, been destroyed. Mm -hmm. Also, there are evidence of um, mass uh, mass graves. Mm -hmm. uh, which have been concealed, whereby uh, permanent structures have been uh, erected. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, there are some claims that uh, where the the airport of Bujumbura is situated currently mm -hmm. uh, it was a place whereby um, mass graves were uh, did take place, and mm -hmm. then uh, and then. Uh, um, uh, the, the structure was elected. There mm -hmm. are also other other examples like um, the road which was constructed in Zubanza, mm -hmm. uh, where, uh, which also uh, is another example. Uh, there is um, Vitaza where the market is. Vitaza in uh, what used to be uh, situated in the rural, uh, Mujumbura rural, but now is uh, falls under. Murmonge province. Murmonge, yeah. uh, that is also uh, another example. There is um, in uh, a place like Nyanzalate, there is a place like Mabanda, there is uh, a place like um, Mugara uh, in the Mashuma. Mm -hmm. All these places, we find out that they are permanent structures which have been elected there. This is one way of uh, concealing, concealing. evidence. Mm. So, no matter how the CBR uh, can uh, try to do its best, but uh, the, uh, if you want to get enough evidence mm -hmm. to make sure that it can uh, it can uh, can be uh, used to uh, to hold uh, people or the perpetrators of gross violation of human rights uh, in the past to be held to account. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I don't think there will be need uh, of destroying the the whole airport <laughs> in order to get those uh, those documentary or uh, material evidence. So uh, let's go to the last question, and this is uh, the in impunity in Burundi has been considered as a culture by David Taylor, and Eme Parfeni Yonghuru called it an evil. How uh, or what do you call it? Uh, uh, to me, I call impunity uh, in Burundi as a travesty or a shame mm -hmm. or miscarriage of justice and mm -hmm. highest degree of human rights violations in our contemporary society. Dr. Lea, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you so much, Hillary, for inviting me uh, in this discussion. I also thank viewers and listeners. Until next time, stay safe and be blessed.